Hello everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I think it's a very nice time so after lunch. <laughs> so I don't think I can take too much time. Um uh, a little bit of uh, you know um um an architecture and more about how we solve the business problem and and that's what we wanted to cover here. <coughs> to start with, you know, um so we wanted to cover uh, you know an interesting topic today. um while working with various customers you know engaging with uh, various different kind of uh, integration projects you know uh, we learn a lot more th stuff uh, we learn a lot more on the business side we learn a lot more on the technology side and you know, how various scenarios can be accommodated uh, with a uh, uh, platform integration platform and middleware platforms um so to start with you know i just want to cover up you know little high level on uh, business trends uh and it demands this is one of the gap as an enterprise architect i would like to see that um the role of enterprise architect uh, you know i try to solve a business problem using technology and that's where i add a value to the business on what we can drive uh, uh the business to uh, take a benefit out of the technology so <clears throat> while working on that you know we we as i said you know we keep repeating a uh, lot more uh, you know Uh, repeated architectural patterns and repeated uh, design patterns and things like that for various uh, different engagements so we came up with a, a blueprint of a reference architecture we wanted to uh, you know apply that in all of our customer engagements and that's one of the uh, key initiatives uh, that we have taken um, uh, to drive various customer needs uh the the other one is you know while evaluating uh, various products of uh, to meet our reference architecture uh we we would we landed at wso2 and we have a few uh, you know information about why we landed wso2 and uh, the solution definitely it's it's a, it's a vast solution uh, i don't think i can cover the entire solution talking about the solution and its uh, capability uh in this 20 minutes <laughs> so i would like to give some high level view on what we have achieved what we have uh, uh you know uh, you know uh, uh, achieved so far and what we are planning to do uh, at later phases so i think you know the the uh, the session title itself you know uh, it's a retail so since you are all here uh, i think uh, you know uh retail is one of the common scenario that everybody can understand and also the the use case that we have taken here today uh is uh, for the retail retail industry um uh, but this can be applied in across all different industries as well um the cases is you now the trends the business trends are keep changing every day every minute every second this keep changing on and keep on growing um so it's very demanding one especially on the retail industry it's going drastically changes and there are too many number of uh, you know expectations and customer uh, you know expectations and business expectations now how do we can address that uh, that's what we solved the problem uh, for some scenarios and we are still working on to solve few more uh, scenarios as well <coughs> one common goal for the retail business is customer experience if you maintain a customer experience obviously your business will keep on going and everybody every in industry every industry is trying to do that and retail is more aggressive on the customer engagement but at the same time uh when you coming to the customer engagement it's not just a one letter it has a multiple things so you have to give lot more benefit to gain the customer experience your customers are vastly uh, distributed in a different region different location different attitude different uh, expectations so royalty programs keep going digital coupons not a flyer coupons digital coupons i'm using mobile phones i don't want to use the flyers so i i need a coupons on my mobile app and inventory accuracy i want to know where it is where the stock is which shelf it is which store it is and what time it is available i want to know the inventory of this uh, of the product so i can successfully go on purchase things shipment visibility as soon as you purchase online you you are expecting when it will be shipped when it will be delivered even uh, if you look at the amazon today you know they are sending a notification to you um if you have amazon app you know you can purchase and you get a notification as soon as the package dropped in front of your door actually that's how they integrated the systems uh, to keep track of you know visibility to give the visibility to the customers um instance offerings <coughs> 
mobile payments production uh, product lo localizations uh, mobile store guides it's it's more level iot space related areas like you know if you get into the store you want to know which product is in which location so you want to navigate to the product location um, uh, offline shopping not just online shopping offline shopping as well uh, 3d sampling smart shelves omni channel virtual fitting rooms this is keep on going this is keep on going in industry so as a as a retail industry i I'm, i have stores i have e-commerce systems i have mobile app but still it's not enough for me to meet the customer expectations i have to fill a lot more stuff into that at the same time i'm a cao or i'm a vp of engineering and i have another challenge while one side i have a business challenge another side i have a technology challenge there are huge number of technology trends keep on changing every day we started with applications we went to web we went to the processes we went through the uh, cloud computing and iot soe uh, analytics this is keep on changing again pure systems so what is the problem so one side we have business expectations another side we have technology challenges the most important challenge everybody facing today is budget regardless of the technology challenge i have to manage the budget how do i manage the budget i how do i meet the customer expectations this is the question every place either it's the retail industry it operations or across the industry this is a common question every year we have to go through this question and we have to have an answer for that and the expectation is that you know we have to meet lot more technology needs we have to bring new architecture big data is coming up and iot is coming up i need to meet the big data requirement i need to meet the iot requirement also so how can i how can i meet the budget so that's where we we thought of okay why don't we have a fundamentally architecture pattern that is scalable beyond what today's need it basically meet the tomorrow's demand so why don't we have a architecture that basically scalable not only meet today's in uh, you know demands uh, today's needs um, when it coming to the iot or device integrations we keep on investing time and money on rebuilding our systems right over the years instead of that we should have a unique architecture one architecture which is scalable for today's technologies and also scalable for tomorrow's need how do we put together the architecture uh, of course you know this is not a one salary it's going to cover up for 20 years definitely not none of the it system it architecture will cover that it keep changing again but it is scalable or not that's what the question is we took one thing as a base for us regardless of all the architectural approach all the technology changes today the one common thing across all all the architectural model is the integration without integration without data movement across all different systems new initiatives architectures nothing will function so the the integration is a backbone how do we strengthen that if we scale this up tomorrow's architectural needs can be fulfilled with the same platform that we are building and if it is a proven model that's well well very well so we can go with a uh, service oriented architecture maybe we can keep extending that to meet various demands and uh, and architectural needs so we came up with the reference architecture as i said in the beginning you know we came up with the reference architecture where uh, we want to have a blueprint ready and whatever level we know today whatever level we know we know soa we know integration we know esbs but there are demands on across all other areas like iot's big data initiatives application integrations kiosk integration machine in, machine in, uh, integrations uh, uh, machine uh, device integrations and um, mobility integrations all different you know different directions things are coming not only that today there is no single business as a independent business business associated with another business obviously so <coughs> so the uh, the expansion of architecture needs not only within the organization it's beyond the organization so how do we take that up so we put together a reference model which basically covers the fundamentals the backbone of integration based on a uh, service oriented architecture topologies so we basically created a uh, layers different layers we decouple that we put in the different layers of uh, components as a services and those services are available across 
uh, across the systems. And any systems that wants to make use of those services can consume the services and use that. At the same time, we also expanded that beyond integration. Because today, systems in the back end integrated with that doesn't give any business uh, you know, uh, answers. right? So analytics play a key role here. Earlier, it was a, a business activity monitoring was one of the key tools were used to track down all the data flows happens in the backbone. But today, it's not just enough. Business need more values. It's not just an IT report. It need more values. So analytical can play a key role here. So we have accommodated analytical as a part of our whole architectural model. And we wanted to ex uh, you know, separate the rules. We wanted to separate the event processes, and we wanted to separate the pro business processes. So we have separated that, and that can be plug and play model. It can be you know call the services, can be use other services, or it can be you know isolated. Uh, or if it, if it doesn't require, we can just basically uh, need to need not accommodate that. On top of that, we have a uh, the gateway layers. Um, there are n number of systems are going to be connected, not just application. It's also from the devices that store in the in the store level. In the retail industry, it's a store level. There are a lot more devices are coming up. IoT space, there are a lot more devices are coming up. So we need to integrate with these devices. We need to integrate with applications that may be hosted inside, may be hosted in the cloud, may be hosted in the, in the partner side. So we need to integrate with applications. And uh, and more important. Nobody really think what is happening in the backbone. We don't really know what is happening in your backbone, right? We only see in the eyes. We give more importance to the eyes than the backbone, actually. So anything that you are seeing is what you are realizing. So that's where now UX is very important for us. We need to present it to the business, the way business understand that, the way business looking at the data that's flowing through the integrations. So we need, we have to give importance to the UX layer for business to handle the situations on their own. They can go and search on their own. They can go and find out the services available. They can go and find out the analytical reports available. They can go and qu query themselves to find out the data available for a sales transactions, for a prediction of the uh, product in the, in the store or the, in the warehouse. So they want to do a lot more things on their own hands. So we need to give more flexibility to them. On the conceptual layer, um, the channels, the channels are basically uh, anything, any device, internal, outside, uh, or any application that wants to integrate with our uh, core architecture platform uh, that can connect through a channel. The application consumers, um, operational dashboards, everything. So we put together the architecture first, and we started evaluating a single platform. Our goal was to look at a platform that can meet all different needs today, and also scalable to meet the tomorrow's need. So we started looking at various products um, uh, available in the market from open source and, and the commercial uh, commercial products as well, and we landed up uh, in comparing with what we have, what we can get from uh, WSOTO. So platform layer, of course, either cloud or on-premises. We we have a tools, uh, we have a, a product supported by WSOTO. Okay, fine. And from the services layers, uh, we have different needs. ESB we have, we have MQ, uh, um, we have uh, uh, you know data services that decouple our data layers. So we have these uh, integration layer. We have a different set of products. Processing layer, we have a different set of products. Processes related to the business, business uh, separation of business rules, business processes. We have a separate one. And the complex event processing from the data analytic aspect. Complex event processing, uh, the analytical servers. OK, good. So we have the analytical capability also uh, that we can use it. And on top of that, we have a mobility, a cloud gateway, and uh, API management or user experience, whatever ways you want to do that. The last one is uh, you know, um, at the external level. Either it's operational report or business report, uh, application um, or application consumption um, uh, you know, uh, related activities, and, and related to the uh, store level access. Finally, wrap all the things with a single process and policies. Right? That is very important. We can create n number of services, but if you're not able to manage the life cycle of the services, you will be ended up in having ad hoc of services. That is very similar to going back to the old age, actually. So we need a governance and uh, identity server to control and consume the services that are available across things. So we put together a lot more uh, you know, uh, platforms. So we identify, OK, let's start with WSOTO, where we get what we want today. And I believe we will get what we want tomorrow also. 
The next stage is, OK, we have a blueprint, we have a product. But again, you know, we need to come up with something you know, uh, more reusable for us. We need to come up with something more uh, accelerate our implementation cycle across different, uh, different business requirements. So we put together a yeah, development framework on top of WSO2 based on our principles that we defined as part of our unified architecture. The development framework, uh, we come up with a list of services that we identified as a reusable services across business, different business needs. Either it's a SOA implementation, or it's a ES, simple ESB integrations, or data analytics, or real-time predictions, or it is a mobile devices, IoT needs. The simple platform can help, should help us to, uh, to achieve our uh, acceleration needs. So we put together yeah, reusable services. We built a reusable services across um, some of the design patterns, based on the design patterns, on the uh, common areas like exception handling, notifications, uh, failovers, um, and how do we handle the transactions, messaging. And we also, you know, this, this framework also helps our implementation team to follow the standards that we have defined here. Now, we have a platform, we have architecture, we have a platform, and we have a development framework also. So we have done that. Now we need to look at the business transformations. This is where the key things. So when you're coming to the business transformations, look at the uh, retail industry. So retail industry, uh, you know, it's been through a lot of changes over the years. The, um, the changes happened, uh, you know, uh, from, uh, uh, from corporate level at the headquarter level, at the store level, at the e-commerce level, at the supply chain level. All different angles, you know, the changes happened. So why don't we put together a platform that solves the problem from supply chain till the stores or the e-commerce? How do we keep track of the data that flows from the supply chain? So the, today's the demand is, if you want to manage the inventory of your store, you should know what is that supply, uh, supply chain capabilities. If you don't know that a supply might delay a few days, then you have to proactively act on how, how many days before you have to give an order. So there is a connection between your supply chain and this uh, product available in the stores. <coughs> so how do we bring all these end-to-end -end information in a single platform? Instead of have building a separate platform for different uh, organizational needs, we build a single platform uh, that covers the data from supply chain to um, stores, not only stores, into the um, e-commerce and other devices also, other areas as well. Typically, what happened? This is where you will end up. If an organization grown over the years, they have a headquarters, they have a stores, they have e-commerce site, they have a multi-channel marketing, uh, everything is in place. But instead of building a single platform, they would have built a multiple different architectural approach of uh, integration happens between that. Now, in this model, you will not have any visibility of what is happening in your corporate level, what is happening in your store level, or your sales channel level. So to avoid this, we wanted to build a scalable architecture. So first, we identified, OK, let's build a service-oriented omni-channel uh, uh, solution which basically connects your corporate to the, uh, all your different sales channels. But when you go into the sales channels, uh, there are different sales channels. The, the, stores, the stores are acting different. They need a, a different uh, information compared to the uh, e-commerce side, compared to the marketplace. So if you look at the original one, the, we, were locked, uh, we, we saw another demand in the market as a product localization, right? The product available in Texas may not be, the product demand for the, uh, for the Texas region may not be for the uh, New York region. So how do we identify the demand of the product in a different locations? That is where you know, we need to have a different store engine that running specific for the stores. Each store is different, completely different, based on its geolocation. So we need to have a a uh, single, uh, each, each store has to have its own um, capability to integrate within the system. This particular store service bus is capable of expanding into IoT space. Either you want to have a smart shelf, either you want to have a smart cart, or you want to have a kiosk where customer can go and purchase the product. Everything is connected with your source, stores, and everything is localized. So 
the independence is more uh, given to the store on how they are connected with devices, different devices, different needs. But at the same time, the corporate need a control on that. Corporate should know that what is there in the store, what is there in the shelf, how many products are there, who is purchasing what. Those informations are very important. So integrating with the corporate system also important, right? Corporate system may have a distributed applications. So we need to have a separate uh, you know, engine for corporate. So we built a uh, application service layer. If you look at that end to end, we have application services that connected with the supply chain and the applications. We have a uh, store engines. We have a connections between that through the omni-channel. So now we have end to end visibility. The data flows from supply chain to applications, application to the store, store to back to the applications. We have end to end visibility. Now why don't we build a data analytics on top of that? That gives more business value to that business users. So that's where we built a omni-channel uh, analytical server. This component running on top of the uh, WSO2 analytical server, and it's basically uh, looking at the data that flows through the whole channel and identify the predictions and what is happening, how it is uh, data is flowing, what kind of comparisons. Not only that, it's basically comparing the uh, data that flows from uh, headquarter to the store. At the same time, the data flow from the stores or e-commerce channels back to the headquarter. It's basically trapping all this information, put together the analytical, put together the uh, you know, logical thinkings, and then come up with a report saying you know, how this can be uh, used by the business. And we put it in the private pass. So the solution we deployed in the Amazon private pass with the help of WSO2 private pass uh, product. And also we put it in the uh, on-premises. Either it's a, it's a customer is looking for uh, you know, private pass based model, and they want to try it out in the private pass, or they want to try it out in the, uh, the on-premises. Both are same platform, same uh, code, same logics. It's just uh, deployed in two different places. And we call this as a solution, um, as an ROS solution. Uh, it's nothing but uh, Aspire Unified Reference Architecture, especially for the retail industry to compare end-to-end -end of uh, industry needs. What we achieved? <coughs> Excuse me. Number one, we have a blueprint of unified architecture that covers integration based on SOA, event-driven, or you call it as a messaging middleware, whatever way you want to do that. Either it's a real time or batch, still covering up. We have analytics, we have a cloud, and we have a IoT readiness also. The interfaces that we have created are capable of interfacing with any beacons, RFID sensors, and detect the, uh, pass the data or, uh, or uh, detect the data and bring that back to the store level, and also that can be passed back to the corporate level. So the data can be used by the corporate to understand what is happening in the store level or what is happening in the market level. Pre-built services. 100% reusable services because we built it this based on NRF art standards. When we are focusing on the retail industry, we want to go with the standards. We don't want to have our own canonical models. So we went through with the NRF arts model. Therefore, we can accommodate a different kind of a business needs with a single um, uh, you know, um, messaging model. And more important, we put together as a data-driven architecture. What does this mean? This means the solution can be configurable. It just put you put you put a uh, solution in the in the in the systems and you want to keep adding more and more uh, configurable information. It's all in the data driven model, so it's not depending on the server. It's depending on the data <coughs> that we drafted in the in the solution. Uh, it's available in on premises as well as in the private pass. As I said, you know, it's it's uh, it's uh, IoT readiness. It's it has interfaces with the beacons, RFID sensors, and machine APIs. Completely built on WSO2 platform. We have not used any other API, any other customization we have done in WSO2 platform. We just took the raw platform and we built the solution on top of that, and the solution is running on the private pass without any custom changes. And that's the beauty of WSO2. So we have another session. So because as I said in the beginning, you know, it's not just a one solution that I can talk about the solu entire solution here. We have another session especially for the uh, analytical uh, you know, engine that we created. Um, that's a subsequent session is happening in the next door. Uh, just, just now, just following this, 
So if you are interested to learn about how we have done in analytical space, you can probably uh, join that session. That will be a continuity for you to understand not only the integration aspect of that, but also the analytical aspect of that. Please go ahead and visit our website. You can give a feedback to us. What do you think? What do you think? It's maybe a good, it may be a scrap, or whatever it is. You know, just give a feedback. All your inputs are accepted. And we will take it, and we are working hard to improve the solution that we are building. Yeah, of course, as I said in the beginning, architecture is not something that we can print it and then use it. You have to keep evolving that. You have to keep evolving that, and that's what it is. Thank you.